So how can you create a virtual reality application in 2021? Well, I'm gonna tell you that Unity just released their new package, which is OpenXR. And for those of you who don't know what OpenXR is, it's a open and royalty-free standard developed by Kronos that aims to simplify AR and VR development, which means they're gonna be able to target multiple devices that are currently supported with OpenXR. So I'm gonna be showing you how we create these scenes by jumping into Unity and I start to work on it. All right, guys, so the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna go into new and select 2020.2.3F1, which is the version that I have or greater. And then I'm gonna be selecting the project name. I'm gonna do open XR. It's gonna be demos. Okay, so we're gonna start with an empty scene. Now click on window and we're gonna go into our package manager. In our package manager, we're gonna go into Unity registry. I'm also going to be clicking on the gear icon here, go into advanced project settings and then click on enable preview packages. And you're gonna say, I understand because Unity doesn't recommend that you use previous packages for production. So it's gonna say, yes, we're just testing things out. And then I'm gonna be just searching for XR and you're gonna see everything here available for XR. The one that I want to install is gonna be the OpenXR plugin. So click on install. Okay, so because the new OpenXR plugin requires the new input system, it's gonna tell us that we need to basically enable that. So I'm gonna say yes to enable it. Okay, so it looks like we have all the packages that we need for now installed. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back into the package manager and then let's go ahead and click on in project. It's gonna show everything that we have. I'm gonna click on open XR plugin, go into examples. And the one that I want to show you how it works is gonna be the controller, click on import. And now we can close out of the package manager and you're gonna see that if we go into it, there's gonna be a scene that we're going to be able to run on our Oculus Quest. And it's gonna be this scene this also has different bindings, like an action map and input actions that we're going to be not only using, but also looking at how we can bind in a brand new scene. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into file, build settings, and I'm gonna be focusing on player settings. Let's go into XR plugin management. And because we're gonna be running the Oculus in the actual PC, Mac and Linux standalone settings, we're gonna be clicking on open XR there. And it's gonna give us this exclamation mark saying that we have some settings that we need to apply. Basically, they're saying that linear color space is supported on OpenXR, gamma is not gonna be supported. And then it says at least one interaction profile. Basically, some settings that we're gonna be, we're gonna need it anyway. So I'm gonna click on fix all. Okay, we're gonna have one, one that it's not been resolved yet. And it's gonna be resolved because we need to, we need to actually add a feature. So before I do that, I'm gonna go into Android and I'm also going to be enabling the OpenXR there. So we should have it not only on this one, but also on the Android. Now, if you go into OpenXR features, there's gonna be different profiles in here. There's gonna be the, some of the profiles are gonna allow us to capture the device, the input from the device. So I'm gonna be actually enabling the one for the Oculus touch controller profile. And I'm gonna show you how that it's going to work. But that's everything that we need to do there. Then the next thing that I normally do, I'm just going to be adding this open scene if we wanted to build it to the device. I'm not gonna build it to the device. I'm gonna be running this on the editor. Okay, so now that we have that, let's go ahead and take a look at a couple of things in here that are going to be really helpful. So before I run this, I want to walk you through some of these components. So the player rig is going to have a, a tracking more origin. This is how they're defining whether the origin is going to start on the device, is going to start on the floor, or is going to be using a tracking reference, such as a gaze, if we wanted to use gazing then you can do that. Then you can also change some of the settings in here that I'm going to, I'm not gonna go through all of these ones, but just so you know, this is using the new input system. So some of the bindings in here are going to be coming from the new input system. And in this, in this case, it's gonna be the input actions. And then it also has the action asset enabler, which is going to basically enable those actions as soon as, these, as, soon as the game starts. The other thing that we have in here is also a gaze. So you can also do gaze. You can see how we are controlling the position of this gaze game object if I were to enable it. You're gonna see that it has just a sphere. And what they're, what they're doing on this example is they're just changing the, the position and also the rotation based on the eye gaze from the, from the device. And know that this is using OpenXR, so it doesn't really matter what device you're using. As long as the device is supported, they're going to be controlling and abstracting where the ice gaze information comes from. On the head, it's gonna be similar. They're using the track pose driver. We're gonna have the position being the center eye position. And then, you know, using the, some of the new input, input actions. And then the left hand as well. So if we go here and expand it, 
you're going to see that we have, if I were to make this a little smaller, there we go, and get closer. I'm going to show you how that looks as soon as we run it. But it basically has all the different controls that we are going to be capturing from the controller. This one is going to be the aim, so they have a, basically a line render aiming to the cube, and also a grip, which is going to allow us to, basically it's going to have the pivot point at the origin of the controller. And you can see that it's using the device position here, and this one as well. This one is actually using the pointer position, and also the pointer rotation. So I'm going to be creating one of these scenes from scratch so that I can show you how it works. So the next thing that I want to do is I want to run these and show you how it runs on the Oculus device. We're getting the position on the controller and also the position on the right controller. I can also point the ray cast, the pointer position and rotation is changing. I'm, I also can control the primary to the axis on the left controller and also the one on the right controller. I can also press the buttons. I am rotating. The other thing that I can also change is whether we're going to be starting on the device or we're going to be starting from the floor. So if I were to select this, we can select device, which is the one that is currently set. Or I can go to the floor and you can see that now the, the pivot point changes. So if we go back, let's go ahead and change it back to device. And we can go ahead and go back to that. So that's everything that I wanted to show you on this demo. So let's go ahead and jump back into Unity. And I'm going to be creating a brand new scene by using OpenXR. All right, guys, so the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to create a brand new scene. So let's go ahead and right click in here and then go into scenes. It's going to be open XR. Hello world. Hello world. There we go. Double click on it and we're going to have a main camera in a direction light. There's not going to be a lot of, a lot into it right now, but we're going to be adding to it. So this one, this one is going to be the player rig. I'm also going to be adding another child component in here, which is going to be the actual head. And then what I'm going to do is on the main camera, I'm going to be dropping the main camera to that component. And then we got to zero out everything so that we have the main camera at the pivot position. Let me go ahead and add the scene view here so that we can see everything. So in order for us to be able to change the position of the head, we're going to have to actually add some bindings. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go into a component and I'm going to be adding a new component called the track pose driver which I show you on the, on, the other, on the other scene, which was already added. So in order for us to be able to add these, we're going to be telling, we need to tell the system where it's going to be basically changing the transformation of this object from. So we can do that by adding a binding. I'm going to double click in here. And you're going to see that we have a couple options in here. We have either the XR controller or we have the actual HMD. So if I click on the HMD, we can also tell it you know, what we want to bind to. In this case, I want to be able to bind to the center eyes position. So I'm going to go ahead and do that because that's going to be the position of this component, so which is going to be controlling, controlling the camera. The other binding that we're going to be adding as well is going to be the same thing, but it's going to be the rotation. So double click on it, and then we're going to go into XR HMD. And then in this case, it's going to be the rotation. So that's really all we need to do in order for us to be able to track the, the head. The other thing that I'm going to do as well is I want to add the left controller and the right controller. So for now, I'm just going to say left hand, and then I'm just going to clone this as well. And we can do on this one, I can just do a right hand. And I want to add, just going to go ahead and add a cube, and we can put that cube inside of each one of the hands. This one, we can just say the mesh, and we can resize it in a, in a, little, in a little bit, and then add it in here. Then let's go ahead and go ahead and, and resize this thing. I'm actually going to make it, let's see if we can resize it. Uh, let's do 0.25 here, and then we can do 0.25 here. And I'll do the same thing on the other, on the right hand. And what I'm going to do actually, let's do it. I think I'm going to, we can rotate it on, let's do rotation on 90 degrees on X. And I'll do the same thing on, on this one as well. Then the other thing that I'm going to do, because uh, the graphics are not going to look as good, I'm going to go to lighting, generate lighting, just going to make it look better. Okay, and that should take care of that. The other thing that I need to do as well, let's go ahead and go into the left side here. And if you look at the pivot pointing here, I need to actually offset this a little bit to, you know, to the left. So what I'm going to do is, I think it's going to be 0.5 there, yep. And then also on this one, it's going to be 0.5. That way the pivot point is going to be this guy, and then the pivot point is going to be this one as well. So now what we need to do is we need to be able to change those, the position of the, 
of the left hand and also the position of the right hand. So we're gonna be doing the same thing that we did on the other one. I'm just gonna go ahead and add this track post driver. And in this case, it's going to be a little bit different because we're gonna grab the, the actual position. So I'm gonna go ahead and go into bindings and then add a binding. We also have the XR controller here and you can grab the XR positioning here of this component. So I'm gonna grab that one. And then I'm also gonna do the same thing here. And you gotta pay attention to, so if we go back into here and I grab the, so there, you need to grab either the left one or right one, right? So in this one, we wanna use the left controller. So just gonna go ahead and remove it. And let me click it and then hit minus, click plus, rebind it, click, click in here, and then XR controller. So if you look in here, we have left hand and also right hand. So I'm gonna do left hand because we're using the left hand. I'm gonna bind that to the device position. Then I'm also going to be doing the same thing here. And then this one is gonna be the rotation. That way this one, you know, we're controlling the device position from the XR controller and also the rotation. And I'm gonna do the exact same thing here. I'm gonna grab that component. I'm gonna hit plus, add bindings. And then we're gonna go into this one. It's gonna be the right hand in this case. And then I'll do the exact same thing in here. Double click on it. Then go into XR controller, right hand, and then device rotation. And that should take care of that. The other thing that I could have done as well, so if we go here, let's say that we, add, we wanted to add a new binding. There's also bindings specific to the controllers that you're targeting. If for whatever case you wanted to do that, you also have the Oculus Touch Controller OpenXR. And we can also do that and be more specific. This one is going to be more generic and it's gonna work more across the globe. So if we have other devices such as the, the HoloLens and you know the, the actual Oculus Rift, then we could do it more generic. That way we don't need to target those devices specifically. Okay, so the next thing that I'm gonna do is we need to add a couple more things in here so we can make it look better. So I'm gonna go into plane and this is gonna be your ground. And then I'm going to also add another asset that I normally use for this kind of thing. And I'm gonna go into my assets and it's gonna be prototypes. And I normally use the grid box prototype materials, click on import and yes, I wanna import everything. Okay, so it looks like everything got imported in there. Then let me make sure that my, I'm gonna go into perspective here. And then I'm just gonna offset it. Perhaps we can do 0. That's 2.5, I think we can do 0.25. I think that's fine, or we can just leave it as zero. That way it's just right underneath, you know, underneath us. I think that works perfect. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clone this a couple times. So this one, I'm just gonna go ahead and put perhaps right here, and then we'll grab this one and select it, and then snap it to right there. And I think I, think I only need a couple of those. There we go. And I have way too many, we only need three. Okay, I'm just gonna do, this is gonna be ground. I like to name things correctly. And then I'm gonna go into my materials here that I just downloaded from this asset. And then we can just change them. Let's go ahead and do blue all the way across. Blue, blue, and blue. And then normally, because I don't wanna see the edges in there, we can just clone this a couple times. That way, you know, I don't have to do one individually. We can just clone that, control D to clone them all. And then I'll just put them right here. There we go. And then now that I have those ones all cloned, I like to name everything correctly. It's gonna be ground, perfect. And now that we have that, if we go into our camera here, we make sure that everything is, is correctly aligned. And I think this side is going to be in the positive direction, yep. The reason why I'm doing that is because I'm gonna be placing a couple of spheres in there so that we can see something through our camera. And I'm gonna go ahead and offset them in here and then put them right there. We can put another one right here, another one right here, another one right here. And then perhaps we can do one more here. And then what I'll do, I'll just put some on the top so we can look at the sky. It'll force us to do that. And we'll just put some on the back. Okay, so something very simple. We have the controller, then we have our floor, and then we also have, obviously we have our camera. Okay, so let me go ahead and rename everything here. So I'll just rename all of these ones. Let's go ahead and select them all. Perfect, and then I'll just create a new game object. I'll call it environment. I'll do this just in case you guys want the code and then move it in here. And make sure I do drag and drop it inside of the environment game object. 
and that should be everything that we need to do. Okay, so let's go ahead and test it and see if this is going to work on our device. All right, guys, everything is working. You can see that my, you know, my left hand, the rotation is working correctly. Also the one on the right hand. I can see the spheres, also the floor thing is casting. If I turn around, I can see the, the actual sun and also the spheres that I put on the back end. DC is really cool. Everything is running on OpenXR, so I'm going to call it good. I'll do more tutorials as I learn more about this component and I really appreciate your time guys. Thank you.